we previously covered one of Dagestan's first UFC prospects, Rasul Mirzaev, the man who loved to let his hands go at nightclubs. Last time, due to a disrespectful comment, he has punched Ivan Agafonov, who fell and hit his head on the concrete and unfortunately passed. The judicial system concluded that it was involuntary manslaughter rather than a murder, and Rasul was freed from jail after two years behind bars. Sadly, he did not learn his lesson. Celebrating New Year's Eve at his apartment, news come out that Rasul Mirsaev was brutally beaten to near death and shot with a pneumatic pistol by a group of young men who entered his apartment and then went into hiding. Rasul was rushed to ICU and police began the search for the assailants. Due to the nature of the extreme violence, we will only show parts of the footage from the assault and heavily modify it. Now, let's pause and rewind. Why did an attack so brutal that it could have killed Rasul occurred in the first place? The man who was the central figure in this assault is named Kamil Alaverdiev. He himself is an enigma in his own right, as he appeared in numerous viral videos and memes in both the Russian-speaking world and the West. In Russia, he first appeared in a viral video of a few young Dagestanis in Moscow being interviewed in the streets and proclaiming that they came to Moscow in order to establish order. Так, почему вот вы уехали из Дагестана? Там нет работы, там плохое образование или... Нет, просто своих бить не хотим. Своих бить да. не хотите? Хотите бить местных? Да. Москвичей? Не, не, не москвичей. А, кого? Тот, кто Порядок уехал, наводит. Да. А, понятно. Порядок наводит. Порядок. Then a few years later, he also became infamous for the too well-known meme of Kabab and a bunch of his friends squished in a bathtub. Yes, that is the same guy. He also has numerous pictures in nightclubs and videos of him trolling foreigners in Russia. He also was clearly friends with Khabib at a point in time and has many photos with him. Kamil, who is currently a successful streamer in Turkey, again, this man just has a knack for going viral, and goes by his username Lakma, has recently spoke out in order to share his side of the story. According to Kamil, he was visiting a restaurant bar called Oblaka, or Clouds in English, sometime in 2016. He met Artem Lobov, the goat of MMA, in the bathroom, and seeing a legend right in front of him, he began a polite conversation. Seeing that Kamil has ties to Khabib, and Lobov was at the time one of Connor's closest friends, they talked about the possibility of their fight, and that it would be a fight for the ages. This part checks out as this takes place about two years prior to Khabib and Connor's fight, and due to the fact that this also predates the infamous interview where Artem Lobov trashed Khabib, making the rivalry reach extreme levels. Lakma mentioned that Artem was with the popular local entrepreneur and club scene persona Gusein Gasanov and another MMA fighter Ali Bagautinov as well as Rasul Mirzaev. As he was walking with Artem towards their table, he was telling Artem that if he needs anything, he can just holler at Lakma and that it's nice to meet him. As he was finishing up his words, the DJ cut the music off while transitioning to another song. And in that moment, he heard Gusein Gasanov say, when will this drunk idiot get away from him? It created an awkward situation, as Gusein probably didn't think he was going to be heard since the music was playing. Offended and feeling disrespected, Kamil grabbed up Gusein only to be pulled off by Ali Bagautinov. Ali Bagautinov pulled him to the side to talk it out. Kamil was telling Ali what happened thinking that since both of them are Dagestanis, there would be some sort of common ground. Ali basically shut everything down with saying that Gusein is their guest, and they will not allow anything happen to Gusein, no matter what. Kamil said, Okay, we'll see how you manage to do that, and went back into the club. Kamil once again went to confront Gushin, and this time he got grabbed by Rasul. 
Rasul then spun him around and struck him. Camille claims he doesn't know exactly how got struck, but that he was dazed. He got up and told everyone involved that if they're man enough, they can come outside and resolve this issue outside of the bar. Kamal then went towards his car to grab his registered BB gun and went back towards the club. However, as he approached the bar, no one came out, and the bodyguards quickly grabbed him up and removed his BB gun. Rasul Mirzaev then left the bar shortly after and went home. Camille could not let such public disrespect go and decided to go on a search mission. He contacted his close friends and let them know that his honor was compromised by Rasul's actions, and they told him that they will be with Camille until he finally gets revenge. Being relatively popular and social himself, Camille knew a lot of people in Moscow and notified everyone to let him know if they've seen Rasul or have any info on him. His wish came to him almost like a New Year's present. On December 31st, an unnamed female who clearly knew both Camille and Rasul texted Camille saying that she's in an apartment with Rasul celebrating New Year's Eve. She asked Camille to wait until Rasul comes outside, but Camille was impatient and demanded that she gives up the address immediately and she eventually caved in. He then texted her when he arrived with his friends and she unlocked the apartment door. Camille and his friends caught their target at a perfect opportunity and walked into the apartment with Rasul coming out in his robe and saying, Oh, I was looking for you guys. What happened next is the assault we showed earlier. Camille and his friends brutally beat Rasul, struck him with a baseball bat, used chains to strangle him, and also shot him multiple times with a BB gun. Once they were done, Rasul was left fighting for his life. He was rushed to the hospital where he was in stable condition after the doctors removed the bullets from his body. Now, as for Rasul's side of the story, everything is pretty much the same as with Camille's story, with the only difference being is that according to Rasul, Camille wasn't having a friendly conversation with Artem Lobov, but rather that he was pressing Artem Lobov due to his ties to Conor McGregor. Although it is not logical for that to be the case, as the time it takes place is way before Artem Lobov's infamous interview, neither Camille nor Rasul commented on whether Camille was intoxicated, so that is up in the air as well. Artem Lobov is the central figure who could come out and give his side of the story so that we can see who's in the wrong. However, he has never done so, and probably never will. Another note would be that for all it's worth, Rasul Mirzaev has since stated that he regrets risking his life for Gusein Gasanov. Just like with Rasul's manslaughter situation, the media used this incident for their own purposes. In order to achieve provoking headlines the way media aims to do, many outlets were framing this story as if Khabib's henchman brutally assaulted a Dagestani who dared to have ties to Artem Lobov and therefore Conor McGregor. At least this time around the media wasn't unjustifiably tarnishing Rasul, but they may have been doing so to Camille. In the aftermath, Camille had to flee Russia as he has a federal arrest warrant for being wanted for the assault. He sold his assets in Russia and Dubai and moved to Ukraine then to Turkey, where he became a successful streamer. He still has not returned to Russia as the warrant is outstanding and according to Camille, Rasul's team has informed him that he will only drop the charges if he has paid 30 million rubles. To which Camilla said that out of principle, he won't pay a dime. As for Rasul, this incident proved to be fatal to his MMA career. He took a nearly two-year hiatus from competition to recover from his injuries, and in 2018, he signed a contract with ACB, which angered his mentor Kamil Gajiev, as Rasul spent most of his career fighting for his promotion Fight Nights. While it did look promising for Rasul as he scored a knockout victory in his return at ACB 90, he then dropped three straight fights where he was finished at ACA 99 by Shamil Shabulatov, at ACA 105 by Armin Ospinov, on whom we have a video as well, and that, like Rasul, he was the first serious UFC prospect for his homeland of Kazakhstan. But similar to Rasul, life took a left turn for him, and he failed to fulfill those ambitions. You can check the video out by clicking the card above. Finally, Rasul was also knocked out by Abdulrahman Dudiev at ACA 138 in 2022. He is clearly a shell of his former self and the fighter that was a 17-0 UFC prospect is no longer there. The silver lining is that Rasul seems to have found a niche in semi-pro boxing in the organization called Pravda, where he won his debut fight and is slated to fight in that organization soon again. We implore the watchers to be wise and learn from the mistakes of others. Rasul didn't even learn from his own mistakes, let alone others. His life almost took a tragic turn the first time he struck someone inside of a nightclub. And instead of making his own conclusions, 
he continued to let his hands go inside of nightclubs, and as a result, almost paid with his life. In the end, three lives were severely changed. Even Agafonov lost his at a ripe age of 19, and his parents were left without a son. Camille has lost his ability to live in his own homeland, and as a result cannot return home to his relatives and friends and has to live abroad, while Rasul Mirzaev squandered the only chance he had in life at being one of the first Dagestanis to make it to UFC, and instead spent about two years of his life in jail, and two more years of his life recovering from injuries stemming from an assault in which he almost lost his life. If you enjoyed this bit MMA presentation, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to catch our new videos.